let's see, random sample of size of 15 has a mean of 150. Standard deviation of the sample is 30. Now, what happened here? What do we not know that we knew before? We don't know the population standard deviation. Is it cold in here? Yeah. It's cold in here? No kidding. Okay. Uh, what is it, a blower or something like that? So, so at any rate, I can't tell what temperature does my body's shot you know, with this cold. So at any rate, the standard deviation, <clears throat> where was I? What do we not know here? We know the sample size. We know the mean for the sample. X bar always means sample mean. And the standard deviation of the sample is 30. We don't know the population standard deviation. We can use the standard deviation is equal to 30 in this case, but now we have to make an adjustment. Okay, And that is that we can't use the normal distribution anymore. We have to use the T distribution. Okay, So if I want to calculate the margin of error for samples of size 15 with a standard deviation of 30, how am I going to do that? Well, I got to use 30 for my for my uh, uh, standard for calculating my standard error because I don't know the population standard deviation. Let me get a fresh piece of paper here. So my standard error. Okay, I'm going to n is equal to 15. What was x bar? 150, and the standard deviation was equal to 30. Right. Okay, so the standard error is going to be equal to sigma over the square root of n. We don't know sigma, so we're going to use the standard deviation over the square root of n. Okay, and now that's going to be 30 divided by the square root of the sample size. Sample size was 15, so I kind of, I'll tell you what, let me make this a little easier. Let's make it a sample size of 16. Okay, so it's going to divide it by 4. Right, square root of 16 is 4 is going to be equal to, uh, let's divide that in there, 4 into 30 is 7 and a half. Correct? Okay, good. Uh, okay, so 7.5 is the standard error. Okay, so now when I, do my, when I calculate my confidence interval, I have a problem here. I have, two ver I have two areas where I have, where I've introduced some extra error. First, I, I, don't, know, uh, I don't know how precisely I know the mean, and now I've introduced some extra error by not knowing what the population standard deviation, deviation is and instead using the sample standard deviation. Okay, so now I have to make up for that. So the way I'm going to make up for that is I'm going to say that my confidence interval now is going to be equal to x bar plus or minus instead of the z score, the t score for, um, uh, for uh, a 95% confidence interval, the t score times my uh, times my standard error, which is 7.5. Now, if this had been a z, now I'm going to work that down to this 150 plus or minus t times 7.5. I would have used 1.96 here, right? But now I have to have an extra, I have to have a larger margin of error to make up for this extra uncertainty that I've that I've introduced. Okay, so how do I determine how I accommodate that? Well, I use a t-score, a t-value, instead of a z-value. Okay, and let's take a look at our table. Okay, hopefully I can find it quickly. See if that opens. Doesn't look like it's going to open. Oops, no. There's a problem with that one. C tables, T tables. I got one on the desktop. Let me get let me get back to that one. Here's our T table. Okay, here's our T table. Okay, so what was our sample size? I changed it. It was 16, right? How many degrees of freedom does 16 represent? Sample size is 16. 15. So I'm gonna go down a table here. For a sample a degrees of freedom of 15, I'm going to go across from here. And each one of these T scores, these T values, represents a different right tail probability. Uh, in our case, our right tail probability is going to be 2.5%, right? For a 95% confidence interval, right tail 
and left tail is symmetrical. They each have two and a half percent. This table actually helps you out a little bit by pointing out that that's equivalent to a 95% confidence interval. You guys can see that there, right? Okay, so I'm going to go down this column for the 95% confidence interval. And for uh, my T value, for my degrees of freedom equals 15, the T value is 2.131. 2.131. So I'm going to go back here, and the value that I'm going to use for t is 2.131. 2 I'm just going to leave it 2.13 times 7.5. Okay. okay, so what does that come out to? Anybody actually figure that out? Anybody got a calculator here? I'll check with the guys at home. Okay, let me clear everything. Okay, and um, I'm, I'm 2.13 times 7.5. So my margin of error is equal to 15.97. I'm going to store that in memory, and I'm going to clear it. And 150 minus my margin of error is 134. And... 150 plus my margin of error is 165.9. Once, well, I'll call it 170. Okay, so is this wider than our 95% confidence interval? What is it that this is wider than our 95% confidence interval would have been if we had known the population standard deviation. It is, because we would have used 1.96 instead. So that margin of error would have been a smaller number. Okay, So that's really basically how we're going to apply this T-score. Well, what about if I had had a, um, uh, if I had asked you for a 99% confidence interval, what value would I have used for T then? Let's get the table back if I can find it. What value you, would I use for a t value of for a 99% confidence interval? What's that? Two point, see, 15 degrees of freedom, 99% confidence interval would be two point, I got 2.9, yeah, 2.95, yeah. Right, right, and that is a wider interval because it's a bigger number. Let's take a look at <clears throat> what happens to the T-score as we work with a bigger and bigger sample size. I'm going to look at the 95% confidence interval. <clears throat> as it gets larger and larger, right, what's happening here? The T-score the gets closer and closer to the value the Z-table would have given us, right? So if we got a sample size of 100, it would have been 1.98. Almost the same thing. So if you had a sample size of 100 that you were working with, a lot of statisticians would say, well, this is all an estimate anyway. Maybe I'll just use the t-table, right? And what do you need to go to for sample size in order for you to have a t-value of 1.96? You need the whole population. Or mathematically, you need an infinite sample size. Or by definition, the whole population, right? So anytime you sample, even if the sample population is a million, and you sample your sample size is nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. You 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 actually have a t-score that's different than your z-score, right? Kind of weird, right? Right. So close that it's it's so close that it's ridiculous to even consider that, but it's technically different. Reason why I bring that up is because if you wanted to be completely accurate, any time you took a sample. You would never bother with the z-score. You would always use the t-score. Even if it were a sample size of, two, of 200 or 300, you would use 1.97 instead of 1.96. So if you really wanted to be accurate, that's what you would do. In reality, if you're doing these calculations by hand, it probably doesn't really matter and it's, it's tedious and you really don't need it. When we use software to do it, like SPSS, SPSS always uses the t-score. When we do these calculations in SPSS, we're going to, we'll get back into SPSS next week. I don't know whether that's good news or bad news for a lot of you, 
but we'll get back into it next week, when we use the computer in SPSS to do these same calculations, calculate confidence intervals, calculate standard hours for us, uh, we're going to find that it always uses a T-score, no matter what the sample size is.